I'm Mark. I'm director of LTP in the UK. And um, I've, my, my background is I've been doing this since 1989. What I'm going to be covering today is basically it's a, it's a quick guide to sealing and cleaning without getting too technical. It's, it's basically going through all the products, all the benefits of all those different products as well, and, and what, what you can get out of them and how to get the most out of them as well. So what I normally do is I start off, I, I know it's going back to basics, but it's, it's starting with a brief analysis of different floor types, so different walls and floors um, within our market sector. Um, and they tend to come in two categories. You've got natural wall and floor tiles, and you also have manufactured wall and floor tiles. Just to go through them very, very quickly, uh, with natural stone you have three different types. You have limestones, um, travertines, uh, and you have sandstones. Um, and these are what we call sedimentary stones, and they tend to be the most porous. So um, they're the ones that LTP like the most because they take a lot of sealing. So. Um, and then you have metamorphic stones. Now, metamorphic stones are stones that start off life as a limestone, travertine, or a sandstone. And through evolution and, and the natural sort of um, cycle of, of, of life, they, they evolve over millions of years into marbles and slates and quartzites. And then you have igneous stones. Now, igneous stones are stones that have been on the planet pretty much since the planet was formed. Um, you have things like granites and basalt. Um, then we have things like terracotta. Um, there are a lot of tiles that uh, are around that uh, are made from clay. So you have two different types, low prosty, and you also have handmade high prosty terracottas. Uh, that's how they're basically made. <coughs> and then you have manufactured tiles, so you have things like quarry tiles, encaustic tiles, which you have a lot of here, um, which is a cement base with a, a clay slurry over the top using different pigments, different minerals to get the patterns. Uh, again, they're very porous, so require quite a lot of attention. Uh, then you have things like porcelain, and porcelains come in three categories. You've got glazed, full-bodied, unglazed, and you have polished as well. Um, and then we have things like terrazzo, which are generally resin-bound um, agglomerates. So it's, it's stone particles that have been bound together with a resin, squeezed into a huge block, and then cut into tiles, and then finished. So. And then you have uh, things like concrete pavers, so things that aren't quite like natural stone, but made to look like natural stone, very, very common. Um, and then we have things, yeah, glazed ceramic. I mean, glazed ceramic is pretty much everywhere you go. Everybody has glazed ceramic somewhere in their home. So. We always preach a three-step process, so it's very, very important to clean your surfaces, but it, as well as sealing them. So sealing is just the middle part of what we call a three-step process. So when you're installing a new surface, it's very, very important that that surface is properly cleaned before you start sealing it. And then equally, it's, it's just as important. Um, you've invested time and money in having a beautiful surface put down. The last thing you want to do is then use the wrong cleaner on it. So before, if, if you're sealing a natural stone, it's very important after laying it to then clean it because that gets all the sediment, all that dirt, all the grime out of the pores and it makes the surface far more receptive to sealer. So the more sealer you can get in, the more efficient the seal will be and the longer, longer lasting it will be as well. So another reason for cleaning surfaces is for renovation as well. So you might have a client who bought stone uh, from Pietro Online two or three years ago and they're coming back to you and they're saying, my floor's really dirty, what do I do? I mean, how, how do I, what should I do? Um, this is just an example of a travertine floor in someone's home that, that got absolutely filthy. They had uh, three dogs coming in and out of the house, um, leaving muddy paw prints everywhere. And they just found it, they got to the stage where they just found it very, very difficult to look after. So this is just one process for restoring and getting all the dirt and the grime out of um, a, a stone floor that, that wasn't particularly well looked after. Um, the next product is, is a product called Power Stripper. Now, th this is a product that uh, quite often people think is, is a more powerful version uh, uh, than Grimex. 
Now, Grimex is used for removing dirt and grime. Uh, Power Stripper is, is used for removing over-applied sealers or sealers that have been applied incorrectly because the instructions haven't been followed. So, um, which is quite a common thing, um, especially with MPG sealer on polished surfaces. Quite often people read the first part of the instruction, which is how to apply it, but they don't read the second part of the instruction, which is how to work it into the surface and, and buff it off, basically. Um, so if that happens, uh, you, you basically use power stripper in either a strong solution or a uh, weaker solution, depending on how severe the problem is. You put it on, and using a white emulsifying pad, now, the good thing about a white emulsifying pad is they, you can really scrub quite hard with these. They won't scratch, basically. Um, and, and then you rinse it using a sponge and water to extract. Um, and and that, that's, that's it with that one. The other thing with, with this one is if you've got a floor that is really heavily contaminated, so if, if a client is having a stone floor put down and they, other trades come in but they haven't covered that floor and it gets paint, it gets... Uh, marks, the kitchen fitters have made a mess of it, no one's really looked after it. It's a good idea just to go in with the power stripper, put a layer of the solution on the floor, leave it for 15, 20 minutes, give it a good scrub and then rinse and that will get the stone floor back to its original condition. So it will get all of the sealer out, it will get everything off of the surface. So you're like starting from scratch. Solvex is like a paste and, and it, it, we, we've got it in a paste form because it works both on walls and floors and it's primarily for removing old layers of sealer. So if you've used a film forming sealer like the iron wax satin or the iron wax um, gloss or the um, glaze protector on the surface of your stone, uh, what it does is it, it breaks down those layers and separates them from the surface. So it's a paste that you put on in about 30 minutes, it then separates those layers from the surface. You then just give it a bit of a scrub and rinse. It's also very, very good if, if you have a client who has decided to use an epoxy grout. It's a resin grout that, that isn't cement-based. Um, and they're, they're generally used in commercial areas. So if someone has, has or, or in a hotel, they might use it in the shower rooms. And it's a grout that doesn't go mouldy and it's very, very easy to clean. But it, because it's a resin, it's very difficult to work with. And if you get a residue of that on the surface of the stone, you can actually use Solvex to remove those residues. Spot stain remover and fuller's earth. And I think you do have some of this, uh, but this is generally for removing um, issues with hot oil because there's no sealer on the market anywhere in the world that will stop hot oil or grease from absorbing into stone. So if you're, if you're cooking in your kitchen, um, oil uh, gets up to a very high temperature and that high temperature is enough when it makes contact with the surface of the stone to actually melt its way through any protection that you've put in place. So if it does happen, try and wipe it up as soon as you can. If you're not able to wipe up the oil stain, then it is possible to extract that oil again out of the stone uh, without um, too much trouble. And, and this is how it works. If you watch the pictures, you pour the spot stain remover onto the oil stain. You then allow the, oil, uh, the, the spot stain remover to absorb into the oil stain. You then cover it with this product, Fuller's Earth, which is an ultra-absorbent powder. And you leave it for about two or three hours. And then you just you vacuum it up and then you just rinse it with water. Now what's happening is the spot stain remover has solvent, it's a solvent uh, with orange extracts that absorbs beyond the stain and then what happens is as the solvent evaporates it brings the oil stain to the surface of the stone. So you can actually see it, if you just use the spot stain remover you can see bubbles of oil then sitting on the surface of the stone. The Fuller's Earth, which is an ultra-absorbent powder, it's actually made from limestone and it's double uh, dried in kilns, um, then absorbs the oil away from the surface and then you just vacuum it up. Okay? So it's a very, very simple process and it just solves a problem that is a bit of a, a, a difficult one for any natural stone surface. Okay? Has anyone ever had a client that's complained that oil has gone into their stone? Or? Yeah. Yes, yeah. I mean, this is a very effective way of getting rid of those marks. This is Moldex. This is not something I th I, that you have at the moment, but 
Another issue that we find in the UK is, is if you've got poor ventilation in your bathroom, if you've used natural stone or a travertine, what can happen is um, you get mould and mildew growing in the grout joints. Okay. There's a video here just demonstrating how to use Moldex to get rid of mould and mildew in, in that sort of situation. It just happens to be a natural stone in someone's bathroom as well, which is quite useful. Um, so what we do is we take the product and there's two settings on it. There's a spray setting and there's a jet setting. Um, and you can see all the mould has gathered. It's normally quite common right in the corner of the shower. So you spray it on, and having sprayed it on, uh, you leave it for about 20 or 30 minutes, and that allows the solution to absorb into the grout. Okay. Um, you can leave it up to 12 hours if it's really bad, but um, it normally happens within about 10 or 15 minutes. So uh, you then just rinse it, so you can see how it was before. And then what we generally advise customers to do is using the, this product here um, is just to do their top-up seal using the spray because it's so, so much quicker and easier. So you can see what it's like before here um, and what it was like afterwards. Okay. So what, what that product does, the Moldex, is it actually kills the spore that, that causes the mold to grow in the first place. Um, and then by sealing it afterwards, what you're doing is you're keeping moisture out of the grout joints, out of the stone, that would otherwise culture those mould spores to, to grow and manifest into uh, fungus, basically. This has had iron wax satin on it. So again, you just pour a little bit on the surface. And then having poured a small amount on the surface, get a cloth. I would normally use a microfiber cloth, but we'll use towels on, on a small area like this. Um, and then just spread it out nice and evenly without rubbing. So you need to do it in a way that it doesn't foam up too much on the surface. And it smells quite nice as well. And again, you would just very, very carefully apply it onto the surface and then just leave that to dry. So you don't have to rub this one, you don't have to buff it. It actually cures and leaves a satin finish on drying. Apply it like so. That's it. Simple as that. <laughs> what it's doing now is it, you're, what you'll find with this one is it dries very quickly. Uh, because the solvent that we use in this one evaporates or flash, what we call flashes off very, very quickly. Um, and you can already see there that that one is drying. Now, normally what you would do um, with any sealing product is give it a good 24 hours to cure uh, before you do any really effective demonstrations. This one here, you can see, is dry already. It's not cured, but it's dry. So what you can do with this is then put another coat on as soon as it's touched dry on the surface. So I'm just going to do that now. So when the sealer goes into the stone, it's absorbing in, and each, each layer that goes in is building a layer of protection. And you've got to build a layer on layer on layer to get the best protection. On the top, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So we normally say to clients to um, make sure that they fully saturate their surfaces um, with sealer. Uh, you know when you've got to the point of saturation because you can see a layer of sealer on the surface. After about 30 minutes, it's still there. And if you can still see it after 30 minutes, it means you've achieved your goal. You, you've actually uh, filled the pores of the material. Oh, this is on the polished material again. Um, Matte Stone H20 has been applied on this side. That away. and not this side and again we can just do a very effective water water on this one <coughs> so again you can see water is being repelled on that side when I move it around on this side it is it's not doing the same thing it's beading up on this side that's a good indicator that it's been properly sealed this side there's nothing 
happening at all. It's literally just absorbing into the material. The same. Oh, hang on. I've got, got that one the other way around. <laughs> so yeah, you can see straight away it's absorbing in here and not here. What I said earlier about the water-based one is it's slightly more viscous, so it's a thicker solution. It actually works more efficiently so, than this one. So matte stain solvent-based, you would have needed two coats. The matte stain H20, yeah, one is plenty. What you also find is a lot of installers, um, traditionalists, people who think they've been doing it for years and years and years, they'll look at a polished stain and they'll say, doesn't need sealing. It's polished. Why does it need sealing? Um, and I think this is a good demonstration of, of exactly why it yes. needs sealing. Um, <clears throat> so this is the, the grout and tile protector. And what we've done is we've treated this bit of paper with the sealing solution. This one hasn't had any treatment at all. So this will be like your grout that you've used between your tiles and it's had no protection at all. Now if I pour this upside down and I leave it, the water pulls through straight away. Okay? And you can see how wet it's become. Now hopefully if this one has cured enough, um, can I have a volunteer please? Yeah. <laughs> now this, <laughs> I hope, <laughs> shouldn't make you wet, but we'll see, okay? <laughs> so nothing comes through at all, okay? <laughs> well done, <laughs> you brave man. <laughs> when you seal your joints, if, if water is going onto the joint, what happens is that th this creates a hydrophobic, what we call a hydrophobic barrier, which sits within the grout joint. So if you're in a shower environment and you're washing yourself and the soap is going everywhere and it's going onto the walls, what happens is the water, if your surfaces weren't protected, carries the soaps, it carries the oils from your skin into the uh, grouting, it carries it into the surface of the stone. And if that is not cleaned off properly, what can then happen is it, it cultures mould and, and um, uh, mould to grow in that environment, which is why you start to get black spots. Now, if you've treated it with the material, and as you've seen from the, the demonstration, um, what happens is the, the moisture is prevented from absorbing into the material. And if you can keep the moisture out, you're also keeping the oils from your body, the soaps, the, the natural materials. E everything that you might use in that environment is prevented from absorbing into the material, which would then otherwise culture a mould or, or mildew to grow. Coffee, if it's left in contact with the surface for a long time, then because coffee is quite acidic, it can also, as well as causing a stain, create a bit of an etching effect on the surface. So it will change the texture of the stone. So our advice to people is if you notice a spillage, just wipe it up as soon as you can. Yeah. Okay. Grimex is probably the most widely used cleaning product that we have. Um, and that, the reason for that is because it's used as a pre-cleaner for, for conditioning surfaces before sealing. It's also used for renovating surfaces as well. So going back to what we just said about the renovation, this is Grimex um, in use on a couple of surfaces. I think um, this was in fact uh, an English limestone. This is a Cotswold stone, which, so it's a bit like a sort of um, Egyptian limestone, I suppose. So very, very absorbent. You can see all the dirt and the grime in the pores. Um, when you're using Grimex, you must dilute it. So add a little bit of water. Um, that tends to get the reaction going within the product. Uh, you then apply it to the surface. And it's very, very important that you're patient. A lot of people put it on, they scrub it, and they rinse, and they think, gosh, you know, it's done nothing. So what you have to do is put the solution on the surface, go and have a cup of tea, come back, give it a scrub and then rinse and you'll find that that will then work uh, far more effectively than if you were to just try and rush it. Okay? And you can see all the shells have come out now in the limestone which, which you couldn't see before. And it also cleans up the grout joints because one of the biggest 
problems with all tiles, whether it's um, a, a porcelain or a natural stone, is the grout. The grout always gets dirty, and it always seems to get dirty first. Now, Grimex is very, very effective at cleaning up dirty grout joints as well. Because so, e even between these granite tiles, even though the joint is very narrow, I can see that you know, it is the joint that has probably got the most grubby over the years. We now have grout stain remover. Now, this essentially says what it does on the container. It removes residual grout from the surface of tiles. So you can see that this one you can actually use undiluted, and in its undiluted form, it's very, very powerful. Um, you can see it there being used on a slate. Um, it's probably most commonly used on slate. If you've got a textured or riven surface, um, when the grout is floated into the joints, quite often when you've sponged it off, you think you've done a good job because when it's wet, it looks fantastic. But when it dries out, you're left with this sort of film on the surface. And if that dries on the surface, it's not something you can just simply dust off. So um, a little bit of grout stain remover onto the surface. Give it a, a scrub with something mildly abrasive like this pad here. Um, and then use a sponge and water um, to extract. Now, the, the reason we use a sponge is because it does actually draw the, the, the released residues away from the surface. If you try and mop it uh, with a, a conventional mop or if you use a tool that's not appropriate, potentially what you're doing is just spreading it around, but thinly. So, so when it's dry, you then end up with, you wonder why you bothered in the first place. So, so it's a good idea. Use your sponge, draw it across the surface. That extracts all the released residues into the sponge away. Okay. A couple of things you should know about grout stain remover is never use hot water with it. And the reason you don't use hot water is because if you heat it up, it actually creates a vapor that's not particularly nice. Um, and if your client has a room filled with lovely sort of ornamental metal objects, or if they have a stainless steel cooker hood or a stainless steel object or light fitting, uh, it can potentially make it all, all go brown and rusty. So it's very, very important that you don't use uh, underfloor heating and you don't use hot water when you're using this product. Okay, so you shouldn't artificially dry it out. Now with sealing, um, there's, there's three aims. Um, the first one is stain prevention. The second one is surface enhancement. And the third one is surface protection. And I would say that the overriding aim is probably stain prevention. There's also two different types of sealer as well. You have impregnating sealers and surface sealers. So I'll tell you a bit more about um, the finishes as well. There's normally a choice of finishes that you can offer the customer. Um, color enhanced, matte, and gloss. So you can see here the effect that those different finishes have on the same piece of stone. So natural matte, leaves it looking like the dry end of the beach. That's how I normally describe it to the customers. If they want the damp end of the beach, they can use the color enhanced finish, which is also a matte finish because it's an impregnating sealer. And then you've got gloss or satin. Now, um, gloss or satin will leave a sheen on the surface, but occasionally you will get a client who likes the look of their stone floor when it's just been mopped. So they'll like that slight sheen that it gives or, or the appearance of it after it's, it's been mopped. And we, there are products that will achieve that finish and keep it looking like that. With impregnating sealers, um, this is just a little brief sort of overview of how they work. Um, they're they're ideal, ideal for all porous tile surfaces. So all natural stones have natural capillaries in them uh, that need to be filled. And that's essentially what the impregnating sealer will do. It'll absorb beyond the surface into the capillaries um, the solvent, which is either a water or a spirit-based um, carrier, will then evaporate, and it leaves lots of tiny microspheres in the surface of the stone. And it's those microspheres that actually block or plug the pore um, within the material, and that then stops anything that you spill on the surface from absorbing into the stone. It's matte stone. I'm sure everybody has, at some point, has sold a, a tin or a tub of matte stone. Uh, very reliable product. Um, we haven't changed the formula for, well, the last time we updated the formula was about 18 years ago. Um, we haven't changed it because it works. You know, it does a good job. 
we very, very rarely get issues with people phoning up saying, I've used your matte stone and it hasn't worked. So make sure that the stone is properly protected before any grouting or pointing takes place. Okay. So you can see here what we've done in the video is we've treated the stone um, and now after the sealer has cured, they're grouting in the joints. And by doing that, what you're doing is you're ensuring that none of the cement or the colour from the grouting is actually absorbing into the stone, which would otherwise um, discolour it. And then once the grouting is dry, you just then put another coat of sealer over the top, covering the joints as well, and that will protect the joints too. And you can see coffee, red wine, um, it's just repelled. It doesn't absorb into the material. Um, very easy to wipe up. Matte Stone H20, which is a water-based alternative. Now, the, the main advantage of the Matte Stone H20 over the Matte Stone is there's no odour, so it doesn't smell the same. Um, it actually goes further. So the coverage, because the carrier is a water, is waterborne, um, the viscosity of the um, solution is slightly higher, so it's a th slightly thicker solution. Um, and it's, it, it, therefore, it spreads a lot further. And because water evaporates a little bit slower than a spirit, um, you're able to work with it for longer um, before it completely disappears or dries. So for that reason, you get about a third more coverage with the water-based product, which is quite significant. Um, essentially, it does the same. So the active ingredient absorbs into the pore of the stone, and then the water evaporates, leaving the active within the pore. And again, that's how it does its work, basically. Um, the other good thing about the Matte Stone is H20 is it's, it's actually better suited for external projects as well. Um, it, it, it actually performs a lot better under UV conditions, um, and it will last longer than a solvent-based outside. Okay. Solvent-based still works very well, but you've got to make sure it's, the conditions are perfect as well. Uh, with Matte Stone H20, if you've used it and it rains, it doesn't matter. Um, with the, with, with the spirit-based sealer, if you put it on and then it rains within a couple of hours, then that can be a problem. And then we have Color Intensifier. Yeah. Now, Color Intensifier basically says what it does is it enhances the color of darker materials. So if, if you've got a green or a red or a, a black marble, for instance, uh, and you put this on it, it will keep it deep color. If you put it on something beige or light in color, it's very difficult to see how much enhancement there has been, because it's, 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 if that makes sense. So if it, what it won't do is enhance lighter materials. So if you put it on a beige um, travertine like this, um, it won't make a huge difference to the appearance. But if you were to use it on um, some, some slate like this, um, then it would make a huge difference to the appearance. It makes it much, much darker. It's a polymer that remains within the pore. You saw in the sort of um, illustration. But the difference being is the polymer is slightly different. We actually use a, a silicon-based polymer, um, to, which helps with the enhancement of the material. So it's very different to matte stain. It's a different type of technology. Okay. Then we've got MPG sealer. Now, MPG... Uh, actually stands for Polished Marble, Porcelain and Granite. So MPG is Marble, Porcelain, Granite. Okay? Now, this is primarily for polished surfaces. And the reason it's used on polished surfaces, it's formulated to absorb into what we call nanopores. Does anybody know what the definition of a nano is? It's basically, uh, it's, it's ten thousandth of a millimetre. And this is just a video showing how to fix and seal a polished marble and the process um, involved in, in doing it. So you put a layer of adhesive underneath. That ensures that when you press the stone into the adhesive, you don't... Because marble is a very transparent material, so if the, the adhesive has only made contact with the back of the stone in some areas, that will show through. So it's very, very important that the bed, of, or the bed is very even. And once you've bedded them down, just give them a very light clean with Grimex, that conditions the surface, it gets any sort of sediment out of the pores. 
and then once it's dry you can then put, put, start putting your sealer on. Now with the MPG sealer you can put it on with an applicator onto the polished surface but then after about 20 minutes you just get a cloth and you work it into the surface. So you're doing two things, you're working the solution into the micro pores of the polished surface and you're removing the excess. Once it's cured you then grout in the joints, you then sponge off all the residues. Once all the residues are sponged off um, after two or three hours you can then get a cloth and just give it a gentle dust off to remove any remaining residues of grout. Once that's done you can then finish with a further coat of the MPG sealer which is applied in the same way but you're covering the grout joints as well. Okay. And then just buff to finish. So what I mean by buff is just rub it with a cloth. Um, when you rub it with a cloth you're doing two things. Um, you're forcing the sealer into the micro pores of the polished surface. When you, when you rub a surface, it, it causes a bit of friction, a little bit of heat takes place. If you rub your hand, you can then feel the change in the temperature on your palm. That heat is just enough to expand the nanopolymer within the micro pore of the polished surface. So that's essentially what's happening when you're buffing. So you're removing excess, you're actually curing the nanopolymer within the pore and that's then what stops anything from absorbing into the surface. Then we have our grout and tile sealer. This is a, a fantastic product for uh, any mosaic natural stone because it's all you need to use. Um, if, if someone is putting up a mosaic um, and they don't want to brush on their sealer, you can always just use this, just spray it on the surface. It's also very good for the split face stone as well. So if you've got, do you know what I mean by the split face stone? It's the bits of stone, it's very uneven. You know, trying to brush anything on it is really difficult. Use this instead. So much quicker, so much easier. Um, there is a little video here just showing how quick and easy the product is to use. Um, it doesn't change the character of the material hardly at all. So, um, and, you know, equally on a mosaic like this, I mean, this one isn't grouted in, but if you've got lots of grout joints, it protects the grout as well. And it's also good for topping up protection as well. So if you have got stone in your shower enclosure, um, and in an environment like that, I think I said, you know, probably annually you would have to, to do some sort of top up of protection, you can literally just spray that on, and that would be enough. Stone oil can be used inside and outside and it's, it's generally what we advise people to use if they want to really enhance and bring out the natural beauty of their stone. So it enhances more than the colour intensifier. So, um, yes, yes. Yeah. And that's because it's an oil-based treatment um, rather than a silicon-based one. Um, look, works very well on external stones if you want to because external stone, if you haven't treated it, uh, will fade in the sun. It loses its lustre, it gets affected by lichen, it gets affected by algae, mould. Um, and when you, each time you clean it, it gets lighter and lighter and lighter. So what uh, stone oil can do is actually bring your stone back to life again. And then, then we have things like boiled linseed oil. Um, I don't think you guys have our boiled linseed oil, but it, it's something that's primarily used on very porous material. Uh, we get some clients who use it on the encaustic tiles uh, because they're cement based, they're very, very absorbent. Sometimes they need something with a little bit more viscosity. Um, so not only does it fill the pores, it actually really super enhances the appearance as well. Um, but we, we tend to use it on handmade terracottas because they are a bit like a sponge. The pores are very, very open. Once it's absorbed into the material, Linseed oil, one, when it cures, is actually harder than the material itself. So as well as offering sealing, it also offers mechanical strength to the material. So it's a very old traditional method or product for, for treating surfaces, but there are still some surfaces that, where you can't beat it, basically. It's, it's fit for purpose. Okay. But that's something, you know, if you, if you guys ever did a, a terracotta, and I'm not sure whether you... I think, I think you might have one or two terracottas. Um, this is definitely the best way to, to seal and treat it. Okay. So then we've got surface sealers. Now the difference between a surface sealer and an impregnating sealer is fairly obvious. It 
creates a film on the surface rather than absorb into the material. So after you've used your impregnating sealy, you can then finish the surface if you want to with either a satin or a, or a gloss finish. Uh, they're very, very easy to apply. They're not really suitable for wet rooms or wet areas. So if someone has a swimming pool surround or if they have a shower enclosure, uh, what you can't do is create a film in an environment like that. And the reason for that is what happens is um, if moisture gets between the surface of the stone and the film, it will separate from the surface. Okay. Does that make sense? So you need something that is microporous and breathable, and all the impregnating sealers are uh, of that description. The first one we've got is iron wax gloss. I don't think you guys have iron wax gloss. You've got the satin, haven't you? Um, so um, in the UK, the, the gloss is actually more popular, the, the high sheen. Um, and here, I think you've got the iron wax satin, but I think only one coat has been put on here, so it's difficult to actually because normally three coats is the optimum. There's a video here just showing how it's been applied. I don't think you can see it very clearly. Oh yeah, you can, just. That side has had, I think it's probably only had one coat, but normally you would put on three coats and it would have slightly more sheen than that. I don't, can you actually see that? It's difficult to see in this light. Somewhat slight, yeah. Um, but if you see in the video, it's, it's being applied to the surface. For, for best results, apply three coats. Um, by applying three coats, what you're in fact doing is each time you put a layer on, you're, you're covering where potentially you might have missed, or if it gets absorbed slightly in some areas more so than, than others, uh, it just ensures that you get a nice even finish at the end of the uh, application process. And it just puts a, a nice sort of subtle sheen on the surface of your slate as well. Now, they can't be used outside. So it, it, you can only really use impregnating sealers outside, especially with your winters as well. It's not, not good um, to have something that's film forming because it will just come off the first winter. It will just disappear completely. Now, glaze protector is a, a product that... that will adhere and, and seal surfaces that have very low absorbency. So what we find is um, this sheet material here, um, the very thin material, if someone wants to put a sheen on that, um, glaze protector works extremely well. Um, if you have got um, a surface or a honed granite or something like that, which is very, very low in absorbency and, and the customer wants to give it a slight lift or a sheen, then again, glaze protector can be used. It, it almost creates a glaze on the surface, so it's very, very hard wearing and very easy to look after. Um, this is just an example video of um, glaze protector being used on a, a hard porcelain surface. So um, it actually takes you through the process. This was a client that basically um, had a textured porcelain and it had grout staining all over it, so we cleaned it first with grout stain remover to get rid of all the residual grout from the surface. Um, we sponged and extracted all the release residues. Um, and then having done that, left it to dry and then started putting the glaze protector on. And what the glaze protector does, if you've got a textured surface as well, so if you've got a hammered or a, um, a, a, a flamed or or rough surface, then glaze protector will actually make it much, much easier to mop and look after. And then we have our natural waxes. I think you have, um, you have some of the clear wax. You also have some of the antique wax. And these are paste waxes that are very, very different, very natural way of finishing your, your stone. So it's not like the iron wax satin or the iron wax gloss, which can look a little bit sort of, if, it, if it's overdone, can look a little bit artificial. This is more of a soft sheen, so it's not a high sort of uh, gloss. It, it, it doesn't have that same acrylic look to it. So that brings me on to the subject of caring for your surfaces as well. Um, one thing we do have um, and we do very well with is, is a kit for limestone and marble surfaces. I don't know whether any of you have seen this. Um, in here, 
what you have is an intensive cleaner. Okay, so it's a spray-on one. And this f foams as well. And that is used to uh, refurbish your surface. So if you've had a granite worktop or if you've got marble vanity tops around a basin um, and they've got a bit grubby, a bit dirty, they need a bit more of an intensive clean, we've got stone clean that will do that. Then you've got stone seal, which again is a spray-on sealer that you can use after intensively cleaning. And then you have an aftercare product which is completely pH neutral. So this is one that you would use on a daily sort of weekly basis just to clean your surfaces because that will clean without removing that protection and it will also clean without damaging or affecting the surface of the stone. So it's quite a nice little kit if someone has bought a, a, a stone bowl or if they've got a stone vanity top or a work top then this is quite a nice little kit for looking after those surfaces thereafter. Okay, And then we've got aftercare. Okay. Now this is just as important as the ceiling itself. Um, these are just a few examples of things that can happen. Um, this was a, an, an Emperor marble floor in someone's bathroom and they, what they'd done is they sprayed the walls uh, with a very, very strong bleach cleaner and at the same time it all ran down onto their lovely polished marble and ruined it. So. Uh, this is a, a, a black polished granite. Again, they used a product called Silit Bang Grime and Lime, which is not very good. Um, I don't, you probably don't have that here in Romania, but it's a very powerful um, descaler and degreaser. Um, and again, that dripped on the surface. Again, if that happens, granite is a very, very difficult thing to repolish, especially if it's in a bathroom or in a... In a um, the basic message is um, correct aftercare will embellish and enhance the sealed surfaces. So w when you buy natural stone, it, it's a very informed purchase. Um, people buy it because aesthetically it's, it's a beautiful material. Um, it's not cheap. So if they are then advised to use a bottle of cleaner that costs them 10 euros and they've just spent 2,000 euros on their stone, then it's hardly... You know, it's, it's a drop in the ocean, really. Um, some people seem to be put off by it because they think that you're just trying to get an extra sale out of them. But it's not. It's the best advice they could ever receive um, is using the right cleaner and, and the right aftercare. So firstly, we've got wax wash. And there is a, a, just a little vi video here showing the field of use for wax wash. Now, wax wash is a pH-neutral detergent, um, and it contains a trace of linseed oil. Now, the reason it contains a trace of linseed oil is because when you walk on a natural stone surface, you get wear from abrasion. And that wear opens new capillaries in the stone. So when you dilute wax wash in your water, what happens is the detergent in it is enough to get rid of the dirt and the grime and kill the germs. But at the same time, as it dries, the, the micro element of lin linseed oil that is in the cleaner fills the exposed pores, and that's doing that constantly. Okay. So, I mean, the biggest advantage with all the aftercare cleaners is there that the amount of washes that you get out of a one-litre container. So, out of a five-litre container, you will get 200 washes, and out of a one-litre container, you will get 40 washes. So, it's very concentrated. Now, if you divide the value or the cost of the aftercare cleaner by the number of washes that you get out of it, it's actually cheaper than buying a supermarket detergent. Floor Shine is a product that we sell to people who've had glaze protector or they've had the iron wax satin. It can also be used as a floor cleaner if you just want to build a slight sheen. So if you, don't want, if you just want to gradually build a lovely sort of uh, satin finish on your natural stone, then you can use floor shine instead of wax wash. Okay, if you want to use it as a clean and repair product uh, in conjunction with glaze protector or iron wax satin, then it can also be used for that. So with any film forming sealer like the, the iron wax satin or the glaze protector, what it's doing is it's creating a layer on the surface if you don't use the right cleaner, what happens is you get what we call tracking in the floor. 
So it's where the layer has worn away and the polymer's become disconnected. It can start to look a bit dull, so it'll be shiny here, shiny here, dull where you're walking the most. When you wash it with floor shine, little capful in your water, what happens is as the water dries, it then seals and repairs the, the, the finish that you've put on the surface every time you mop the floor. Now, if you're using floor shine in conjunction with iron wax satin or glaze protector, you can expect it to then last about 16 years. Stone wash is basically very similar to wax wash. Uh, the only difference is there's uh, a couple of extra ingredients put into the product that um, uh, actually help to break down things like uh, body fat, uh, oil, grease, soaps. So it's very, very um, s suited for use in bathrooms and, and wet rooms that have been sealed with matte stone, uh, color intensifier, matte stone H20. So it'll do two things. It'll get rid of all the things that you would normally get within a shower environment uh, without damaging the stone or removing the protective seal. Okay? And it's very easy to use. You don't have to rinse it either. You can just spray and wipe. Now, multi-clean is very good if... Uh, do you get hard water in Romania? What, do you know what I mean by hard water? So lime scale. Um, what this does is it, it degreases, it descales and it prevents lime scale from reforming. So it'll, if you've got a shower screen or you've got a lovely polished stone and it keeps getting lime scale on it from the water, then if you're using MultiClean, what it does is it gradually builds a barrier that prevents lime scale from taking hold. So it's, a very, it's quite unique in that respect. And repeated use will actually improve, the, improve it every time you use it even a glass screen, glass shower screen, hard water area, they, they mist up. Equally, if you're doing, in, in your bathroom, if you clean your mirror with it, it'll stop the mirror from misting up. So, so if, if you're vain and you're worried, you have to do this to your mirror after you've had your shower, then if you're using this, you won't have to do that again. Uh, we have a, a range of tools that are designed basically for DIY rather than... Um, trade and, and, and it just makes everything much, much easier. So we have deck brushes uh, for agitating the surface. So we have grout brushes which get right into the, the groove on the surface as well. This is a claw brush and that's shaped in such a way that you can get right into the corners as well. So it's very, very good. It's a very old video, this one. Um, and then we have the sealant applicator. The good thing about that is it applies a nice even coat. Again, you can put it on the four-piece pole. Everything is done from a standing position rather than being down on your hands and knees. Um, we have uh, double-loop microfiber cloths, which are brilliant for, for buffing. Again, that's the sort of thing, if you're saying to the customer, use a microfiber cloth, they'll say, oh, where can I get one of those? And, no, it's, it, it's only a few euros, but it's, it's something else you can add to the, to the sale. This is the technical data sheets. Uh, we have uh, product guides, which are these guides that I was telling you about. I think you're getting these translated as well. So this one is for natural stone, unpolished. And it, again, everything that I've told you today is in this document. And it takes the trader or whoever it is that is installing the stone through the process step by step, what to do, when to do it, when to grout, when to polish, when to finish, how to look after it. Um, you have literature as well that you, you can offer um, as a, a support. I think, do you, do you guys still have this in Romania? No? I think they've probably all gone. I think it was translated, that one. We've got this product selector, but more importantly, um, we have a new digital guide. And I don't know whether any of you have seen this. I'm going to sit down there and just show you how this works because <coughs> I think you'll find it very useful. Um, and we're hoping to get this translated into Romanian for you as well. Um, we're just waiting for Mariana to do the translations for us. So, um, so this is our online digital um, selector. So what you would do is you press start and on here 
you have lots of different surfaces. I'm sorry, it's not quite fitting on the screen there. But um, when you have found your surface, so we'll go to limestone and flagstones. Okay, so we click on limestone and flagstones. What would you like to do with it? So you have here cleaning, you have sealing, you have aftercare, you have tooling up. Okay, so we'll go to cleaning first. And you're talking to the client, and it's a new installation. So it says here, initial cleaning of newly installed surfaces before sealing, cleans and condi conditions prior to sealing. So you click on that, and it tells you Grimex is the one that you need to sell the customer. Okay, you add that to your choices. Okay, and then choose a sealer for this. So you're in stone, limestone and flagstones here and you choose a sealer for it. Now what finish would you like? Most people would like a natural finish. So we click on natural finish and the first one that comes up is matte stone H20. Okay. You can either, you've then got alternative products as well that will give you the same finish. Okay. So we'll go back to matte stone H20 and we'll add that to our choices. <laughs> and then choose aftercare for this and wax wash comes up but you also have stone wash so if it's for walls stone wash if it's for floors wax wash add that to your choices choose tools for this I want to make the ceiling easier so you put together a ceiling bundle you add that to your choices okay and then what you do is just click it again to view your choices your stone, limestone and flagstone surface, here are your choices. So Grimex, matte stone H20, wax wash and a ceiling bundle. You can then email that to yourself. So if you email it to yourself, you can then forward it to the client. And they have everything there that they would need for their stone floor.